So I'm here with uh, Siriar Sikander, who's one of our postdocs in the math section. He just came back from a school in Rwanda, so I thought we could chat with him a little bit about it. So uh, let's start with uh, maybe you tell us a bit of your background. How, how, how did you get to mathematics and how did you get to HTTP? That was your career so, path. Uh, so I was, uh, I'm from Pakistan and I went for my bachelor's to US and the initial plan was to, well I, was, I always wanted to get a PhD but the initial plan was in economics. In, and a, a PhD in economics? Yes. Uh -huh. And uh, at some point somebody told me it will be really useful if I take some math courses. And, uh, and that was the end of it? That was basically it. Now there was actually a special semester, so you have this choice of going uh, for a study abroad for one semester. And I ended up doing it at uh, university, which was just two hours away. But uh, they had a special math program at Penn State called uh, Mathematics Advanced Study Semester. And after that, it was uh, just a... Uh, after, well, that semester made the decision for me, basically. I was going to pursue mathematics. And then I went to Germany and then to Denmark. And now I'm here as a postdoc. Very good. So, how about the experience in uh, in Rwanda and Kigali? Uh, what, what, how was all of that? About? Well, so, let me just give a little bit of background on the school. This was organized by EAUMP, East African uh, Universities Mathematics Program, mm -hmm. and joined with ICTP. And the main organizer was uh, Bala Shendroy at Oxford University. And this uh, this uh, e a U M P has been uh, running schools of this sort for some time. Yes, I believe so. I mean, and, this um, was. I think it's the first time we do something uh, sort of full collaboration with them. I see. Yeah. Yeah. No, they've been. Uh, it's a. I believe it's a program that is specifically designed. In the mission objective, it says that it's uh, to well to make the situation of mathematics better in East African universities, and I think it's been going on for about. Four or five years yeah, or something yeah. like that. I'm not really sure, but yeah. So, and yeah, so the school itself was uh, three weeks long. I went for the second week. Total of uh, six courses by seven lecturers and uh, 50 students, about 50 students. From all over East Africa, right? Yes, so a few students that I. Well, people that I got to talk to, I, there was a guy from Cameroon, one from Ethiopia, a girl from Tanzania, a bunch of students from uh, Kenya, Uganda, as well. Uganda mm -hmm. and Ghana as well. And Rwanda, of course. And, of course, Rwanda. Mm -hmm. So, it was uh, students from all over Africa, really. And they seemed to be getting along well, too, so that oh, yeah. was good to see. Uh -huh. <laughs> that was uh, interesting. And, um, yeah, so... And how was your, your experience, your course? I mean, this uh, is your first time in Africa, I presume, or, or not? Right, well, teaching mathematics, yes, but uh -huh. I've been to Africa before. Uh -huh. but anyways, that was uh, for a different purpose. Uh, the course, I I really enjoyed it. So it was based in uh, Galois theory, and uh, I used a lot of uh, computer experiments, which I think were really popular with students as well. Mm -hmm. So uh, they used their laptops? Uh. They all had laptops except a few who did have laptops but decided not to bring it to class for some reason. Okay. <laughs> but all of them had their laptops, the internet connection was good enough so we could all download uh, Pari GP uh -huh. the first day I was there. And so uh, Pari GP is a um, software package for mostly number theory, I mean that's the main sort of drive but it, it's very powerful, does all kinds of things. Right. And it's been going on for at least the early 80s. Right. Well, I can safely say this is the first time these students were exposed to it. They yes, didn't right. know about it, so... They didn't even know in general of software of this kind, or not this particular one? Or? Uh, this particular one, definitely not. Uh, some of them knew of uh, Mathematica, but they never used it. So, actually, some of the students were uh, doing applied mathematics, and they were more aware of uh, Mathematica, not beyond that. Uh -huh. But uh, the use of computers in number theory really surprised all of them. They said that they, they just, yeah, they always thought it was axiomatic. You sit down and you learn these things from the book. Uh -huh. This is the first time they were actually playing with the thing, so... And they, they enjoyed it, you said? It definitely, well, they asked me a lot of questions. They stayed uh, on after the classes, just playing with that. So I guess they were, <laughs> they were pretty, yeah. 
they were enthusiastic about it too. So they were trying to download the extra packages that you get. The, yeah. So the um, I mean, it only computes Galois groups for polynomials of degree less than or equal to seven, but you can install something which would allow you to eleven. So most of them did that, and still they were a little disappointed. They wanted to go higher. So I see. <laughs> <laughs> that's all. One of them codes it now for higher per degree polynomials, but uh, that's it. And I think you mentioned something that you, you are kind of out of the blue. You decided to give a prize. Yeah, um, that's true. So it was. Uh, they seemed to. I mean, just to create a little bit of a competition there, I just asked them a question, and said the first. So it was basically asking for an example of a polynomial which was not Galois, but the Galois group was smaller than the symmetric group of its degree. And uh, yeah, they really seemed to enjoy. And I said that the first person who gets it would get a prize. So. So what did you do in the end with the prize? Well, I bought them lunch basically, nothing yes. more exciting. I wish I could do something more exciting, yeah. but that was uh, it basically. And you said everybody but sort of sat down, sat down to, to try to do this? Yes, the, the first example that somebody came up with, there was other people who checked it and said it's not true. So I see. <laughs> but it was about 10 or 15 minutes uh, before, it was a, a group of three students who came up with the correct answer. That's nice. But, uh, yeah. And um, what else? Do you have other things to point out about the experience? I mean, yeah, so generally speaking, students were pretty competent. I mean, there were 50 of them, so you can't gauge all of them, but the ones who were not so shy, you could tell that they're very... Um, the things that they've learned, they were pretty good at it. And uh, one complaint that they were saying was that they're uh, very interested in more uh, cutting-edge research, so more, let's say, fancy things that are not in books yet but they can find them in papers and they can realize it's interesting, but uh, that's about it. They don't have anyone to talk to them about, so they're missing a culture and they're very curious to learn these things, but unfortunately they don't have the privilege like we do to talk about those things with other people. Mm -hmm. So this school really, you think, was quite important in that regard? Uh, yeah, they did get to see some of the advanced stuff and they were very interested in that. They kept asking for references and for problems that they can solve and for uh, other kind of guidance. So they really do want to pursue these things. Mm -hmm. I mean, and how was your uh, experience uh, yourself? I mean, do you, do you, you hadn't done the, make something of this kind before? Or? No, so I went in, well, I was open to anything. I wasn't expecting anything. And uh, I just realized you have to keep yourself a little flexible while teaching because uh, there are some things that they don't understand and you need to spend more time on that and if you try to jump ahead they they will not complain they will just sit there quietly so mm -hmm. you have to slow yourself down and make sure they're following you and they do want to follow you so you're sort of obligated to slow down but it was a lot of fun overall I mean they were very enthusiastic so that made me enthusiastic as well so okay that was good fun and the school the University of Rwanda well I was I was just in the campus for science and technology. And this was, is in Kigali, right? The capital. This is in Kigali, the capital. And the campus itself was pretty... Well, it was substantially big, I would say. Mm -hmm. They had all kinds of departments there, chemistry, physics. I saw a lab, electronics lab there, so I couldn't go in or do anything with it, but they seemed to I have think they, they have unified all the universities that they had in, uh, into one Right. That is called yes, University this Rwanda umbrella and this is in the main campus. Right. Yeah. And also, uh, you weren't in the end in this building, but uh, because they were uh, still working on some of it. But uh, there is a building that would be partly uh, an institute that is really associated to ICTP. ICTP, right? Yes. That, yes. Uh, it's scheduled to be uh, inaugurated soon. Yes. So that was under construction. They told me about it, but mm. uh, you were, I think, uh, just across the street. It's, yeah. It's in the same campus. Mm -hmm. It's in Science and Technology campus. So, mm -hmm. but yeah. So hopefully that will be. I mean, that will give them an opportunity to pursue what they like. Right. And, uh, more resources. Very good. Thank you very much. Oh, you're welcome. <laughs>